Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a number theory problem. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And let's get started. Now this video, I wasn't sure about whether to do an algebra problem or a number theory, but one of my viewers, Tony Haddad, I hope I didn't mispronounce your last name, he suggested that I do a number theory problem, so I'm following his advice. So. Now, what are we going to do with this? First of all, let me tell you why this is considered a number theory problem. Well, first of all, we're looking for integer solutions. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to keep this to positive integers because uh, I'll show you. I'll show you the cases where it's not positive, but you can kind of figure out the rest uh, because there are a lot of solutions. Second, we have four variables and two equations. So that also makes it kind of like diaphantic, right? So how do we solve this system? To be able to solve the system, I'm going to use a famous identity. I don't know what it's called. If somebody knows, please write it down in the comment section because I don't know what it's called or even if there's a name for it. But anyways, you know how we have the Sophie Germain identity, Simon and other stuff. This one, I don't know if he has a special name. But it's a very, very useful identity, and I'll show you what it is. So as it is, like if you look at the system, A, B, C, D are variables. And by the way, A, B means A times B. It doesn't mean it's a two-digit number. Let's just make that clear in the beginning. And I'm looking for all the, like the sum of the products and the difference of this product and so on and so forth. Now, as it is, this equation is not impossible to solve, obviously. You can test uh, different integers. For example, A, B can be... 20, CD can be 14, or AB can be 15, and CD could be 19, so on and so forth. But you have to go through all these possibilities. So there must be an easier way to handle this, right? And that's where the identity comes in. And here's how the identity works. I'm going to go ahead and take this expression, the first one. Let's call this one the first one, and this one is the second one. I'm going to go ahead and square it. What happens if you square AB plus CD? And why are we squaring it? It's going to become clear in a little bit. So if I square this expression, I get a squared b squared plus 2abcd plus c squared d squared. And obviously the square, if you square 34, you should be getting 1156. And if I square the second one, and notice that one of them has a plus sign, the other one has a minus sign, that's, that's critical. I'll get a squared c squared minus 2acbd, which is the same as 2abcd, by the way plus b squared d squared and 19 squared as you know is 361. Now the reason why we do this is because when you add these two squares the terms in the middle are going to cancel out and we're going to get something real nice for example if you add these two things a squared b squared and then c squared d squared plus a squared c squared plus b squared d squared is going to equal 1,156 1, plus 361, which should equal 1517. Okay? Now, what is so cool about this is that this expression is factorable. Why is it factorable? Because you can factor by grouping. If you consider the first and the third, you can take out an a squared, and that's going to give you b squared plus c squared. And then, these two terms have a common factor of d squared and you get the same one, b squared plus c squared. Cool. What is so cool about factoring is that it's easier to solve if you're looking for integer solutions and the expression is factored. Okay? So this turns into a squared plus d squared multiplied by the quantity b squared plus d squared is equal to 1517 or you can call it 1517. Now, this is critical. We started off with two equations. That was a system. That was the original problem. We squared both sides. So you, you kind of need to be careful because when you square both sides, certain things become extraneous. So you have to check the original one. And also we have to be careful because we, st uh, we went from two equations to one equation. So we got to make sure that whichever solutions we find from here satisfy the original problem. Okay? All right, cool. So... What is the original problem? Uh, it is this one. A, B plus C, D is equal to 34, and A, C minus B, D is equal to 90. So this should be satisfied when we got the solutions. Okay, cool. And we'll check that. Now, how do we proceed from this point on? So since the left-hand side is factored, why don't we factor the right-hand side as well? That way we can kind of associate them. Well, 
1517 is not prime, first of all, let me tell you that, and it's factorable. But if you go through some of the primes, like 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, you're going to notice that it's not divisible by any of those, because this is 37 times 41. And you could guess that, you know, kind of guess and check. This is pretty much what it is unless you're using a computer program, right? Or a calculator. So, it's interesting because this number is not a prime number, but is the product of two primes, which means uh, there are only a number of ways you can factor this. That is actually only two ways because you can only do 37 and 41 or one times the number itself. Now, let's look at the first case first, which is this one, and then we'll look at the second case. All right, cool. Now, in the first case scenario, if I use 37 and 41, what happens? Well, I can probably say that, and I say probably because we have to check it, right? I can probably say that, well, this could be a 37 and, and means at the same time, b squared plus d squared could be 41. Now, how is that possible? Now, can you write any number, any integer as a sum of two squares? Of course, we're talking about positive integers here. Is it possible? Something to think about, right? Can all numbers be written as, for example, can you write 6 as a sum of two squares? Can you write 8 as a sum of two squares? Can you write 9 as a sum of two squares? So you can go through some of these numbers and see when it's possible, when it's not possible, or is it always possible or sometimes possible? Anyways, that's another story. Let's go ahead and get back to our story. Our story requires that we have to find A, D, B, C. Well, by the way, I just messed up here. There's something wrong. I just realized, okay, this is supposed to be b squared plus c squared, not b squared plus d squared. Therefore, this should also be b squared plus c squared. Awesome. Okay, now it makes, uh, it looks much better. So now I got to find these numbers, a, b, c, d, right? But at the same time, you got to remember that we have the original problem, right? Let's go ahead and write it down. What was it? It was a, b plus c, d is equal to 34 and then AC minus BD was equal to 90. So this is my original system. And I got to make sure whichever solutions I find from here, they satisfy the first one. Cool. So let's go ahead and look at some of these numbers. We don't necessarily have to solve this completely because I don't want to make this video too long. And uh, that's why I kind of try to simplify it by saying, okay, let's look for positive integer solutions first. But I'll also cover the other ones as well, but not go into too much depth. Okay. So what am I going to do? Well, think about two numbers whose uh, sum of squares can be 37 and 36 and 1, right? So I can basically say that, well, if this number is 36 and this number is 1 or vice versa, uh, this might work. How about the B and the C? Well, looks like if I get a 25 here and a 16 here, their sum is going to be 41. So this is a possible solution, at least based on my final equation. But what about the originals, right? For example, if A squared is equal to 36, does that mean that Possibly a is equal to 6. So let's go, kind of make a table here to check our solutions. I'm just going to go ahead and plug in these values and then see if this gives us what we need. Well, in this case, uh, a could be, for example, 6, b uh, could be 5, c could be a 4, and d could be a 1. Let's see if this is going to work. What is a, b plus c, d? Well, it's 30 plus 14, and I'm sorry. 30 plus 4, and that's 34, so it works. What about the second equation? AC, which is 6 times 4, which is 24, minus BD, which is 5, that's 19. So this quadruple actually works, right? This quadruple works. Okay, cool. What happens if I switch these around? Because as you know, I could also get like a 1 and 36 here while uh, keeping the 25 and 16 like this, right? So in this case, A would be 1, B would be a 5. I'm considering positive solutions, remember? And then C would be a 4, and this would be a 6, right? D would be a 6. I just switched them around. Cool. Now, would this work? Let's check it out. A, B is going to be 5, right? C, D is going to be 24. 5 plus 24, unfortunately, does not equal 34. So this is not going to work. So you got to be very careful when you're writing all these quadruples to make sure that the original equation is always satisfied. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully this gives you an idea about how, how to form our solutions. Now, in addition to switching these around, of course, we could also do the switch like 1 and 36 and 16 and 25. Let's consider that case, for example. In this case, A could be 1 if everything is positive. Uh, A could be 1, D could be 6, B could be a 4, and C could be a 5. 
What would happen in this case? Well, AC would be five, right? I mean, I'm looking at AB, right? AB would be four and CD would be 30. So the first equation would be satisfied. The second equation, AC is five minus BD is 24. This should not give me, or this would not give me 20, uh, four minus five, uh, it would give me negative 19. So this would not work, you see? So only a particular uh, arrangements will work in this case. That's why we need to check the original problem. So this switch didn't work either. Now let's consider a completely different case. Now things don't have to be that way because what we can also do is we can switch the AD with BC. For example, you can have something like this. As in the first case scenario, I could switch without switching the AD. So for example, instead of, this is what I'm trying to say. This could be 6-1 and this could be 5-4. Make sense? Would this work? Well, in the first equation, 30 plus 4 would work. And then in the second one, 5 minus 24 again would not work. So some cases work, some cases don't. We gotta be very careful when, we, when we're doing these things that we have to check the original one. Now this arrangement, you kinda go through the different possibilities. Now, would the negatives work? Well, yes and no. For example, if A and C are both negative at the same time, right, they can be, right? For example, they can be like negative six and negative four, their product is still 24. So if you can keep the same products, like both negative or both positive, that will be fine. Now, let's consider a different scenario because it doesn't always have to be that way, right? We said that 1,517 is not prime, it's the product of two primes. But we could also factor it a little differently, right? Here we have a squared plus d squared and b squared plus c squared. Now let's go ahead and factor this a, a, little, a little differently. How about this is equal to 1,517 and this is equal to one, is that possible? Not with positive integers, but I'll show you one of the cases, and then you can kind of uh, generalize this. Okay, how is that possible? First of all, if b squared plus c squared is equal to one, that means that one of them has to be zero, the other one is either zero or, I'm sorry, one of them is zero, the other one is either one or negative one. So for example, I can have something like, okay, one comma zero will work, one, uh, negative one comma zero will work, zero one will work, and zero comma negative one will work. But this is only for b and c. Now. When you plug those into the original equation, would that work? And what was the original problem? It was AB plus CD is equal to 34 and AC minus BD is equal to 19. Are we able to satisfy this? Let's take a look. Well, if I'm saying that B squared plus C squared equals, is equal to one, then I'm saying that A squared plus D squared is equal to 1517. Now, how do we find two numbers whose sum of squares is equal to this number? Well, if you go back to the very beginning, remember how we got this number. This number was actually the sum of those squares, 34 squared and 19 squared, right? So this came from 34 and 19. So A could possibly be 34 and D could be 19 in this case. Now let's see if this arrangement is going to work for our case. Okay, so I'm gonna make another table here with A, B, C, D and place the possible values. So I'm saying that can a, B, 34, and D, B, 19, while B is one and C is zero. So let's go ahead and check it on the original one. A, B is equal to 34, C, D is equal to zero, so the first equation is satisfied. In the second equation, A, C becomes zero, and B, D becomes 19. Unfortunately, zero minus 19 doesn't give us, so the second equation is not satisfied with this arrangement. But if I make slight changes, for example, can I make it like zero minus negative 19? How do you make it negative 19? Well, change the B to negative one. Is that gonna work? Absolutely, because now we have 34 times zero, which is zero minus negative 19, which is equal to positive 19, and the first equation is not satisfied. So what you need to do is then maybe change this to a negative number, and in, in this case, would that work? Let's check it out. AB is gonna be positive 34, so it's gonna work. AC is gonna be zero minus negative 90 is equal to C. So kind of play with the numbers to make sure that we satisfy the original problems. But again, I wanted to keep it positive. And in this case, you're getting a zero, so these are not positive quadruples. All right, and this brings us to the end of this video. I, wanna, I didn't wanna make it too long. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video at the same time, please comment, like, and subscribe. 
Let me know what you think. And if you have any ideas, suggestions, please write them down in the comment section. And until tomorrow, take care. Bye-bye.